Hello my soccer universe. It's quite late but I decided to make the video now and go watch a lot of highlights. I think it's best to do it when it's kind of fresh in my mind. But first of all, um, quick note in my <laughs> from a very personal point of view. I made the video about yesterday's Euro qualifier games this morning because I forgot to do it in the evening. Well, not really forgot but it was way too late and we were going places made it rather quickly and yeah whenever there's Serbia in the title and Ukraine versus Serbia uh, it totally blew up this is one of the most viewed videos that I've ever made and it bugs me because we were gone I could not finish the editing job so on the end screen I couldn't put the links as I wanted to because I didn't expect so many uh, viewers but I'm very happy about that if you're one of the, those that signed up on the channel, welcome to the channel. I'll keep it going. Um, I'm not wearing the Croatia jersey now because of Serbia losing yesterday. No, um, of the teams that I wanted to have jerseys today, I think Croatia got one of the bigger wins. So for that reason, I'm wearing Croatia, although it's one of the jerseys that I have not been wearing too often as of late. So I'm very pleased to get the opportunity for that. But enough of me babbling around, let's get to the games that were today. Um, I did not see most of the games uh, that were played before the evening games. I saw most of the highlights there and simple reason I was not at home. So um, I saw Italy play in Greece and I saw uh, France play in Turkey. So those are the games where you get a little bit more from me than from the others. But let's again enough babble let's get to the results uh, one by one first Estonia Northern Ireland ends with a win for Northern a 2-1 win for Northern Ireland which uh, gives a very good um, start to the Euro qualifying campaign for Northern Ireland three out of three uh, yes those are the wins against Estonia and Belarus but still you've got to get uh, three wins uh, to start off uh, and then Germany uh, wins 2-0 in Belarus. I think Sané and uh, Reus scored the goals. Um, you know, professional win by Germany. Not uh, They had many chances, but in the, in the end they got the win and no one will expect much from it. Since the Netherlands are playing tomorrow in the Nations League final, they have not played uh, in this group. So we have now the Netherlands had... Um, only two games, Germany also, and Northern Ireland has the three wins. So Northern Ireland nine points, six points for Germany, three points for the Netherlands and Estonia Belarus still have to uh, win points. It is really hard in this group, despite the great start by Northern Ireland, to see anything but Germany and the Netherlands advancing to the Euros. And at least for the Netherlands, I can say even if they wouldn't, they still have to, they still would have a playoff. But again, um, the only loss of the Netherlands was in a great match against Germany and they beat Belarus comfortably. Then we'll get to the next group, which is Group E and there we had, I think the big match in that one is clearly Croatia versus Wales. Um, not Croatia already in a little bit of trouble uh, since they lost to Hungary away from home. So it was basically you gotta take this match. And Croatia was the more initiative uh, team and had uh, Ivan Perisic in great form. Uh, the first goal for Croatia came after... Um, cross by Perisic who would have met a Croatian striker ready to put it in but uh, at first hit James Lawrence and he made an own goal. Uh, Perisic then in the second half made it 2-0 and I gotta say the defending on uh, the Welsh side was not not very great. Um, I think Croatia probably could have made uh, three as well. I also want to note the many many yellow cards that Croatia got which uh, is a little bit of a surprise. To me, um, also has to be said, I didn't like that Croatia is playing at home in their dark jerseys and Wales is playing in uh, their red ones. I know Wales has a um, white away jersey and that with the um, red and white checkers does not work well. I still would wish that, you know, then make a third jersey or pull out the old dark jersey that you had. I think. If 
you're playing at home, you should play in your first jerseys. I just gotta say it that way. Uh, I feel relatively strongly about that. Though. The other game in this group was Hungary winning 3-1 at Azerbaijan. So um, this puts Hungary not really in control of that group, but Hungary looks uh, quite strong with uh, six out of three, same as Croatia. And uh, thanks to the head-to-head, -head, Hungary takes uh, top spot. Wales, three points. Slovakia, three points. Azerbaijan, zero. I still think it could be a tight group. I would expect Croatia to win it, but between Hungary, Wales and Slovakia, anything is possible. I would give, of course, a slight edge to Wales, thanks to the golfer Gareth Bale. But uh, that's basically the only uh, the reason why I would um, give a slight advantage to Wales. Then we get to the next group um, where we had Iceland beating Albania. The group of course is Group H. Iceland beating Albania 1-0. Um, very well deserved result for Iceland. I saw highlights. Iceland basically uh, had lots of control on that one and gets in a way back uh, to winning ways. I mean you know, the Nations League didn't go that well. They already have a win, now they have another one against Albania. I think uh, they beat Andorra, so Albania slightly up. Moldova beats Andorra 1-0, and then the result of the evening. And I watched the second half because I couldn't believe when I saw it at halftime. Switched right over from the other match. Uh, Italy uh, at Greece. Turkey beat France 2-0. The world champions are... I don't want to say dethroned because it's only the second loss, but it's still a remarkable result. Um, and it is down to mostly Turkish tactics that really kept France at bay. And I have the feeling that ever since France won the World Cup, they are a little bit like a diva. They show up when they want to, but if it's the wrong time, they are absolutely a no-show. And so it proved today. They were playing with the first string squad. I mean, yes, Kante was not in there, but if you look at the lineup, there was Mbappé in there, there was Griezmann in there, there was Pogba in there. Um, really, everyone that you would expect. And they didn't get anything done against Turkey. When I watched the second half, it was already 2-0. Um, the first goal after a nice free kick uh, through Kaayan. Coming um, free kick uh, from the left at taking side, going to the right, goes to the center, and Ayan, uh, Ayhan, Ayhan, uh puts it in. And then shortly thereafter, 10 minutes, Cengiz Ünder makes it 2-0. Uh, also a nice um, uh, attacking move where he had a great finish. Turkey in the second half especially should have made it three. Uh, there was uh, two scenes in the 54th and 55th where uh, they were saves by uh, Igor Yoiris. Um, first one, I think he has to make a second one. Yeah, there were two Turkish defenders after corner, uh, attackers, not defenders, uh, at the far posts ready to head it in and he was just standing there. Um, there wasn't much coming from France. I thought they started out the half very well. Um, even got a little bit of danger in, especially uh, with Coman uh, coming in. But honestly, Turkey defended super well, had five at the back uh, in attack and then four in front, front of it. So it was really hard for France to get any space. And most of the French attackers were kind of, you know, they had to move towards the midfield and therefore never much space gained for France. It was really a solid tactical performance by Turkey who completely deserved this win. And that win puts them now in first spot in their qualification group H, three points ahead of France, and they look really, really strong. There's Iceland in there, now with six points as well. They have a loss uh, in Paris. Albania with only three points, I think. That looks already that they will have a little chance. So if I, I think France should still make it, but I think Turkey and Iceland will give them a run for their money. I would at the moment say Turkey and France are going through from this group. Next group, uh, I think not much can be said there. Uh, Russia beating San Marino 9-0, I think four goals by Artem Juba. It's what you would expect. I mean, San Marino hasn't had given up nine in a long time, but um, 
it's still not a great result in Belgium. The other one gets a 3-0 over Kazakhstan with Mertens Castagne putting it out of uh, reach for Kazakhstan very early on. Lukaku adds, adds a third in the 50th. So that's that. Kazakhstan still uh, strong after the win over Scotland and Scotland gets a 2-1 win over Cyprus which now we know how this group will end. Belgium and Russia are the two strong teams. Scotland, I think, has not much chance. Yes, they have sitting now a level on Russia, but remember, Russia has a loss to Belgium. So I would um, really expect Belgium and Russia being the teams qualifying Scotland, unfortunately. And they will probably rely on the uh, Nations League playoff. Maybe there they have a chance. Cyprus, Kazakhstan, San Marino. Not really. Maybe Kazakhstan, if they get a good string of results, could get in there. And then uh, the last group, which is Group J. We have Armenia, Liechtenstein, 3-0. Yeah, that's all right. Then Finland against Bosnia-Herzegovina. That was a big, big result with uh, Timo Pukki scoring two goals in Tampere against Bosnia, which really... Uh, means that Bosnia, they already dropped points at home to Greece, where they had a 2-0 lead. Greece came back. Um, quite a spirited comeback, I might add. And now they lose to Finland, and the next game is Italy away. I think Bosnia could be in real, real, real trouble. And given that result, I actually would have expected that Greece will try to get something from Italy. And I expected a tight game. It was not, especially the first half. Italy really has an identity uh, now attacking soccer, moving forward, uh, many um, quick passes and not that they had many chances, but when they had chances they were clinically. Uh, Barella after a wonderful move over uh, Belotti who had actually three options in the box to play it and he chose Barella, which was probably the best one, made it 1-0 with the first real chance for Italy in the 23rd. But at that point, Italy had already so dominated and played circles around the Greeks, which was surprising to me in a way uh, that the lead was thoroughly deserved. Insigne then with a really nice move. That was actually the first time that Greece really was in, the, um, in their attack, attacking half. And Italy coming right back, uh, getting a throw in, and uh, Insigne gets past the player, and then the defenders are kind of thinking that he is no, of no danger and he can put it wherever, uh, where he likes it most, in the uh, far corner, and no chance in the 30th. And then after corner, Leonardo Bonucci makes it 3 0 in the 33rd. Within 10 minutes, Italy kills off the game. and. Uh, totally deserved it. There was another chance for Barella. They could have made it 4-0. So yeah, Greece looked not good. Absolutely not good. I'm not. I'm. But I'm not, not sure. Italy really played well. Italy, as I said, has a certain identity to them now uh, that is kind of attacking. Not if I make a goal, I sit back. No, they went out and attacked more. And it's actually quite an exciting Italy squad to see. It's angers me even more than that they missed the World Cup because they have good players. They just had a horrible uh, coaching team that completely mismanaged um, the World Cup qualifying campaign. Coming off of a very positive Euros where they had another good coach in uh, Conte, Ventura, really, I think one can safely say one of the worst coaching decisions Italy ever had. And we're looking at the group Italy in full control. I mean, they have even the win over Finland. Finland, six points, sits on the qualification spot that Greece desperately needs. Greece has a really, really tough time getting into the playoffs. Um, I went through a few situations and I barely see Greece making it into the playoff spot. So um, Greece would need to make a second spot. But yeah, Finland looks good and Finland has been actually quite sensational over the last... Uh, few games. Bosnia is in dire straits, I have to say. I think Bosnia really looks uh, bad, especially if they now have to play Italy. Armenia and Liechtenstein are the also ranks. I think this is a tight group. Italy should qualify safely, but Finland, Greece, Bosnia should be close together. But Bosnia has having bad string of results, so maybe it's between Finland and Greece. Let's see. Well, 
those are today's games. Uh, let me know what you watched, what you thought about these games. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.